Hello, we're at Battersea Art Centre to find out what makes a good portrait. Experts consider things like mood, lightness, composition. But of course, we all know the most important thing is how long did it take? Welcome back, it's Portrait Artist of the Year 2020. Of the nine artists arriving in Battersea today, six are professional. Graham Dudridge, Pippa Thue, Nick Fear, Susie Wright, Timothy Gatenby, and Keith Robinson. I've been doing some time frame practice, really, to take away a few of the uncertainties involved, but I'm not sure how much that has worked. They're joined by three amateur artists. Are you excited? I'm excited, yes, I'm losing weight by the second. <laughs> John Bennett, Iman Sidoni Samuels, and Rebecca Underdown. I've done some practice, my husband has sat for me, although he's quite critical. <laughs> I don't think any of them have been good enough for him. Our nine artists are here to show what they can create in just four hours. I'm still working, as you can see, but not frantic. <laughs> they will make their mark. It'll be all right in the end. If it's not all right, we haven't reached the end. And impress our three discerning judges. Wish I had a bit longer, really. <laughs> well, I guess everyone does. <laughs> I've yeah. heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> There's a sensational prize at stake, a £10,000 commission to paint music legend Nile Rodgers for the Royal Albert Hall. So, which of our artists have the skill? Oh, I think I need to just step up the pace a bit. To make it through to the semi-final. Have you finished? I'm not going to do a lot, because at this stage, I could obliterate the work that I'm pleased with. Please don't obliterate the work you're pleased I with. I won't. While our artists make themselves at home, the judges take a closer look at the self-portraits that secured them their place here today. Well, judges, here we are again, the wall, starting with a very small portrait. Small, but very powerful. And I think that's got a lot to do with the expression of the artist, which is one of total concentration. Absolutely, he's really caught something quite tense. I think it's really effective. This is a mystery. Who's the artist? Well, we can rule out the dogs and the child. <laughs> <laughs> the portrait is by the woman. Ah. Yeah. I think the child's expression is so authentic, isn't it? I think that's a classic yeah. sort of toddler. I don't want to be here. And I think she's really caught that sense of movement. I mean, it's just got such fantastic poise. It's quite regal. The position of the head, the way that the chin is tilted. I think her hair is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the way that she's done that. I think the brush marks are really interesting. They've got a horizontal flow to them. It's almost as if she slid something across the canvas. You get a real sense of light shining on a very sort of fresh mm. surface, and it comes from the way she's put the paint on. Now, this is extraordinary. It's got a very street art feel to it. I think it's interesting that they've done it in this two halves, and you've got the yeah. ghosted version here. And I like the way he almost disappears, sort of apparating down into those boots. How strange is this? I'm trying to work out what the narrative is. Obviously, the artist is speaking to us through his puppet. But, you know, so peculiar. Why is he barefoot? You know, what sort of story is he going to conjure up today, you yeah. wonder? It's lovely. It's scruffy and it's honest. It almost looks ecclesiastical, that yeah. there's this kind of light coming in. It, he suddenly appears. The apotheosis yes. of John. Yeah, you think he he's seeing a vision? I think that he's a very modern-looking saint, perhaps. Yeah. You can almost taste the colours with this work. It always pop the necklaces as sweetie into your mouth. I particularly love the loose paint and how vivid and quick it feels. It's a very well constructed head. It's an honest bit of observation. What makes it sing are really those colours that he's introduced, the blues and the greens, and they sort of play against the pinks and the browns of the skin. So we've got a mixture of sizes, mixture yeah. of techniques, and there's yeah. quite a lot of yeah. puzzling narratives to be explained. We'll see. Thank you. 
With paints prepared and brushes in place, there's just one more thing our artists need for today's challenge. They're sitters. Artists, as the original people's poet, your sitter today is something of a legend. He's a lyricist, a rock star, a social commentator, and now even an honorary doctor. Please welcome John Cooper Clark. Playing a major role in the 70s punk movement, John Cooper Clark's career as a performance poet spans five decades, and his work still inspires the likes of the Arctic Monkeys and Plan B today. How are you doing? All right. Do I call you John? Yeah. Doctor? You want it informal? Doc. Doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had a portrait painted before? Millions of have times, you? yeah. Do you have any idea of what you're after today? Uh, something in the way of uh, heavy air brushing. Right. <laughs> we can do that for you. You can make him eternally youthful. Of course we can, yeah. yes. <laughs> Artist, your sitter, is a presenter who has lit up our screens and entertained us on air. She is also, I understand, a fantastic artist herself. Please welcome Fern Cotton. <laughs> well known for presenting Top of the Pops, Red Nose Day, and as a panellist on Celebrity Juice, Fern Cotton was the first regular female presenter of Radio 1's chart show. Now, we've heard about your being an artist. Mm. What kind of an artist are you? Well, I actually like to do portraits myself. So you've done self-portraits? Yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of self-portraits. Quite true to life, I think. But yeah, I, painting is a great passion of mine. So what about your behaviour? Do you think you'll fidget? I haven't sat down for this long without a child screaming at me or without a laptop in my hands for years. So I don't quite know what's going to happen. <laughs> Good luck. Artists, as well as appearing in hit TV dramas Peak Practice, Sherlock and The Windsors, your sitter today has also appeared in a host of award-winning film and theatre productions. Please welcome the wonderful Hayden Gwynn. <laughs> After rising to fame in Drop the Dead Donkey on TV, Hayden's successful stage career has included the award-winning Billy Elliot the Musical and on film in the magical live remake of Beauty and the Beast. Yes, please. I imagine you have, what, dozens of portraits of yourself around your house? <laughs> <laughs> well, weirdly, I have been painted, but not, not sitting, you All know, right. for roles. Right. Um, I've been painted as uh, Camilla ah. uh, for the Windsors. It's a giant pub sign. I see. Uh, and I have actually got that, and I don't know what to do with it. Open a pub. <laughs> <laughs> the Hayden Gwynn, it works. The Hayden Gwynn. Sounds like, yeah, perfect. Is there anything you guys are looking for from Hayden? Is it possible to put a shoulder in my direction? Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. To scarf or not to scarf? No, I don't think. It's yours. OK, great, I've got a no. scarf. <laughs> Iman, what do you um, feel? Maybe look a bit over there. Well, how bit, do you feel? A little bit over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sitting still part is uh, well, it's what I do best. Oh, is it? Oh, good. Sitting down and staring into space is 80% of my job. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hayden. Hello. Hi, Hayden. Hi, Artists, I know you're all eager to get going. You have four hours to create your portraits. Your time starts now. Whilst most of our artists go straight onto canvas, one begins by exploring her ideas on paper. I'm just doing some quick sketches to try and get the rubbish ones out of the way. <laughs> Help me figure out also where the light is and sort of where her face is, and then I can get it onto the canvas so it looks a bit better. I just need to get it on paper first so it's out of my system. <laughs> Amateur artist Rebecca Underdown lives in Gloucestershire with her husband and two young children. Her self-portrait took around eight hours to create in both acrylic paints and pens, 
which she uses to add extra colour and detail. Your uh, self-portrait. Your... Dogs on a wall, the family are all sitting there. Mm -hmm. You thought this would make the ideal self-portrait? I just took separate photos of people, but nobody would sit. I mean, my little boy's always running around, and the dog's always on the wall. So a bit like when they do the posters for the big Hollywood blockbusters, they take pictures of them individually and put them all together. Yeah, you have to do it like with your family. Avengers. Rebecca's Avengers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so your bright colours, will they stay that bright? I might make them brighter. Maybe. I can see tubes of all sorts of exciting stuff over yeah, there. Yeah, we've got some pens, we've drawn it as well. OK. Yeah, scribble it out if it doesn't look good. <laughs> well, so I'm going to keep an eye on you. This, anything could happen we'll see on this what canvas. Happens. <laughs> yeah. Most artists are working in oils but one prefers a medium more often found in the stationary cupboard than a portrait artist's studio. Susie, you seem to be sort of feeling your way with pencil and yeah. then you nail it down. And I thought it was some exotic sort of artistic ink. Actually, it's biro. Yeah, biro. So it's sort of basic materials yeah. to do something extraordinary. Yeah, and I have to use like different ones because some of them are like very flowing and others are better pigment. <laughs> and it was such a soft beginning with the pencil. But you're going really heavy in now with the, with the ink. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way you like it. I like it like that. Because she looked quite dreamy before. And now I can, I can see the hard side of her. 24-year-old <laughs> Susie Wright is a professional artist who splits her time painting and working part-time in an art shop in Oxford. A lover of bright colour, she was keen to include her trademark turban in her self-portrait, which took six hours to create. In your self-portrait, you were very exotically dressed. Mm -hmm. um, Ferns rather more sort of sedately just he has got a sparkly top on. And great shoes, great which shoes. unfortunately are not featuring no, in the no, portrait. No. Where are you gonna find the colour? That's what oh, I Oh it just it. comes out. So it will be colourful. I don't know how. I love fern cotton, I think she's fantastic. So That's it's really great. exciting, oh, good, yeah. Good, good. And I love her nose as well. Oh, yeah. And she's got a very good nose. Yeah. She found you a very good sitter, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm really intrigued to see how it goes on. Yeah. You've stormed ahead. You've got him there in the chair, you've got the head, you've got the glasses. Do you usually work this quickly? John's got such a powerful look, so it's already kind of there in the mind, yeah, isn't it? It must like... be fun to be the coolest person in the building, mustn't it? <laughs> yeah. He certainly is. His pose, you know, the chin and the and the way you're capturing that, and it's tremendously yeah. idiosyncratic. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's giving you the perfect sitter. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Professional artist Timothy Gatenby trained in experimental film at Queen Mary University and traditional portraiture in Florence. He likes combining the energy of street art with a more representational style, as in his self-portrait diptych. I'm spying another canvas here, and I know yeah. your submission was a diptych. Is it too much to ask for that we might have two? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go for the diptych. Brave man, yeah. I like it. You just get that sense of movement when you look at one and then you look at another. It's got more of a narrative. Will you be doing a shadow? It can, yeah, it's nice to have one slightly more blurred out than the other, so you've got that passing of time. Sponsored by a paint company. You've used about 16,000 <laughs> different colours already. So use as many as possible, accentuate what's there a little bit. So how informed by what's in front of you is your choice of colours, or do you tend to go to the same group of colours every time? There are certain colours that if you know they're there, although you can't see them. You know they're there, yeah. although you can't see them. There are hints to them. From this distance, it's difficult to see them, but... So you're painting colours that aren't there, but are there? Yeah. They're there, they are there somewhere, but you just can't see them. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm with you, I think. <laughs> Nick Fear spent 15 years working for the Environment Agency in Leicestershire before becoming a professional artist. He painted his self-portrait from a photo using a variety of flat brushes. How are you finding Fern? She's very good, yeah, very still. Almost too pretty. Too pretty, yeah. too pretty Fern, Different. apparently. <laughs> I've got those sort of gnarled kind of. You want someone wrinkles. more gnarled? Yeah, please. Can you do gnarled? <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's pretty gnarled. <laughs> Nearly one hour in, most artists have established the composition and can start to consider the more detailed features of the face. Can't draw maths. 
but I might just bodge that bit. We'll gloss over it until the end to put it in last with the background. <laughs> I don't want it to look too rigid, so I always want it to kind of look like it's flowing across the painting. The character's coming through a fog almost. With the biro, because you can't get rid of them, so literally those lines are part of the picture, so you've just got to work with it. It starts neat, and then you get them to it, and then it does get a bit messy. <laughs> Competing for a place in the semi-final, our artists are hard at work painting John Cooper Clarke, Hayden Gwynn and Fern Cotton, who've been holding their pose for one hour. Whether confronted with natural beauty or a face that's partly obscured, it's the artist's job to capture the essence of their subject. What I think is incredible is there's a lot of stuff around John, his glasses, his hair, and his great outfit, and it's very difficult to get to capture him, but somehow you've done that. This pose reminds me a bit of the Velasquez Pope, and he is a bit of a punk pope. Okay. The bits of his face that you can see, I'm just trying to put those in without labouring it, and so I hope that I will catch something of his presence, because he does have a presence. Professional artist Graham Dudridge works as a commercial photographer by day squeezing in time to paint in his garage at home. Fascinated by storytelling, his self-portrait was inspired by an early 20th century Indian cigarette packet, which said, passing show. I love this hand and you captured it with very few marks. How does one proceed now? Do you become more precise and make it more finished? I'm going to add the jewellery with a crisper touch, so that will be the detail. Ah, element. OK. I don't want to influence the way you paint, <laughs> but I, I think that's rather marvellous. But anyway, it's uh, up to you. Thank you. <laughs> the picture should say something in visual terms without you having to say it out loud. Putting the background in, because that controls the colour of the skin. If you've got someone with very red skin, you, you don't want a green or a bluish background too much because it'll make the skin look even redder. Liverpool-born John Bennett is an amateur artist who's enjoying his retirement years traveling and taking short courses in portraiture. He wanted to be inventive with the angle of his head in his submission, which took 20 hours to paint. You've got these lovely earthy colour tones, yes. which obviously you've drawn from the set, but you tend to work in a relatively realistic palette anyway. It, it tends to be limited to five colours, but I'll spice it up a bit for the oh, occasion. Oh, like six or seven <laughs> today. But still the lovely drawing underneath, so do you feel confident with the lightness? It comes and goes, it ebbs and flows. It's a journey of something coming from the sitter mm. to the artist across the ether. So you're getting the waves from I'm here. I'm trying to get Aiden's the waves. been a good sitter. I, she's a wonderful sitter, and I'm trying to get the waves. OK, good. From working by instinct to taking a more measured approach, each artist has their own individual style. I like the way you've cropped her head. I like to have the face quite big so I can, like, do the motion with my paintbrush. I see. I use flat brushes. Right. So it's always an across motion. I've got all three paintbrushes in my hand. I know. I'm, I'm anxious for you as you keep switching yeah. them. Yeah. It them gets a bit messy, but... And you're wearing some very nice clothes today. And it's one of my main challenges for today, not to get any paint on myself, because my mum would be like, I can't get it out, so... 17-year-old Iman Sidoni Samuels lives at home with her mum and dad in London. Her self-portrait was painted from a photo she took of herself by a window, as she liked the patterns the light created. Where would you normally be on a Tuesday morning if you weren't here? French lesson, A-level French. Well, this is better than double French, isn't it? Mm, it's really surreal. I just I can't like get over, like, I'm actually here. Good luck. I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you. Bon chance. It's That's French. French. Yeah, very good French. It's very good French. Thank you. 
Behind each of our sitters is a backdrop inspired by different aspects of a famous artist and their work. What's today's theme? Today we've taken the greatest artist, Vincent van Gogh. If you think about the early years, we had those dark, brooding paintings. And then in the middle years, you know, we've discovered post-impressionism and all that wonderful colour started to come in and texture. And then finally in the south of France, you had these fantastic Provençal blue skies and the intense yellow that you'd have seen, say, in the, the sunflowers, sunflowers uh, fields or the cornfields. And what about the sitter who we have here? John Cooper Clark. I think he's a bit like a praying mantis. It's almost as if he's about to sort of pounce on something. He's one of the most original sitters we've had. I'm kind of uh, in a self-induced trance. I've got a fixed point in the middle distance. Once you've got it and you take your eye off that fixed position, that's kind of the kiss of death, then it's all over. So behind Fern, tell me more. It is from Vincent's Parisian years, where he was starting to build up his own style of brush marks, and they're quite gestural. And it's a close-up of a self-portrait, and it's of his beard. It's interesting you mentioned beards, because obviously a big talking point in this series is going to be your beard. Um, is I don't own, see is, this, it, is, is it a big talking point, really? It, it is in my house. Well, you know, it was a... Uh... Is it an homage to anyone in particular? Or... Well, yes, to Vincent. I was, I was grasping for... So yes, absolutely. It's an homage to Vincent. Yes, yes, It's yes. not in any way a midlife crisis. <laughs> I feel like I'm almost invisible. These guys are painting and there's all these wonderful spectators eagerly watching. And I sort of feel like I'm voyeuristically just watching everything, but I'm not here. So within all these earthy tones, mm. we've got Hayden sitting in a very bright shirt. I think she's got a lovely long limbs. Two of the artists have just gone straight for the head and one's capturing her in the chair. I think I'll be quite drawn to seeing an artist who understands how to get that poise. People sometimes say I think it's because I'm tall and quite slim that I'm elegant, but that's not how I see myself. I see myself as much more gawky than that. So I don't mind if they see that. Hayden's got a great face. The eyes really need to be nailed at this point because they're a bit dead at the moment. It's got real sparkle. The light's sitting there and it's got quite dark irises. So the more right marks in the right place, the more life, basically. Professional artist Keith Robinson lives in Surrey with his wife Kerry and seven-year-old son. Both have featured in his paintings exhibited at the BP Portrait Awards. He wanted his self-portrait to be an honest and direct image of himself at this stage of his life. You went at it very quickly, didn't you? Yeah, if I can get it as quick as possible, then it's just trying to make the paint do something, really. I'm quite always interested by the size, because your self-portrait is very contained and compressed yeah. and small. Did you know you were going to do it this large? I was going to do it on a, a bigger canvas, and there was just too much space around yeah, it, but okay. it just looked a bit lost. It looks perfectly placed yeah. here. It's just putting the marks on and making sure the marks don't take you somewhere where you don't want to go. <laughs> After spending the best part of the morning on a subtle drawing, one artist has only just started to add paint. Pippa, I have to say from a distance, it looked like you hadn't done anything for the first couple I of know. hours. You're painting in watercolour, mm -hmm. which always strikes me as a bit of a high wire act. It's my process. I have to ignore everybody else and stick to it because I know if I think, oh my goodness, I've got to get some paint on the paper, I'm going to come unstuck. Because if you get it wrong, you've fallen off that high wire. Pippa Thew established herself as a professional artist over 30 years ago, painting show dogs. She now spends more time painting people and likes the intensity of the gaze she caught in her self-portrait, which took 20 hours to paint. When you're not painting, what do you do? I'm a magistrate. You're a magistrate. I'm a magistrate, Congratulations. Yes. I always wondered when you first go in as a magistrate, do you have imposter syndrome? Well, you don't go in and go, hi, it's my first day. <laughs> You have to get a very serious hat on. Sure. You have to judge without fear or favour. Well, I'm going to talk to Ty, Kate and Kathleen and tell them to judge without fear or favour. <laughs> good that on seems, you. That seems good. <laughs> Our nine artists are approaching the halfway mark. And for one, that means it's time to start a second portrait. 
The hardest thing was just making sure the sunglasses are the same size in both pictures. It's kind of like more 18th century poet on one side and then the more rock star on the other side. It could look quite cool. Not 100% with the likeness at the moment. Fighting with it a little bit. Losing it, getting it back. It's almost there. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> in a state of tension. But it'll be all right in the end, we hope. If it's not all right, we haven't reached the end yet. Here at Battersea Art Centre, the artists have spent the morning intently studying sitters John Cooper Clark, Fern Cotton, and Hayden Gwynn. The judges have also been scrutinizing each artist as they form their opinions two hours in. Halfway through, so to start with Hayden's group, Keith is painting a very regal mm. portrait of Hayden. It's a big, oversized head. He got the likeness quite early on. He was really, really focused on that. John hasn't found a likeness, but what he has found is his figure in space. It's got a great atmosphere. Becca, Keith and John, they're all working with a lot of colour. Mm. I don't know whether it's inspired by Hayden's sort of orange sweater and whether that sort of sent them all off in one direction, but they're all revelling in colour at the moment. Moving on to Nick, Nick is giving us a very colourful fern. I mean, I love the way Nick uses colour, the way it's inflected through the face. He started with a very good drawing of fern. The colour flecks are all there, but they're not binding together to make a form. Susie, far more colour on her than on the canvas yeah. at the moment. I mean, it's almost like we're waiting for her to kick into gear for the patterns and the splosh. And I worry that the colour is going to be a kind of afterthought. Fern's an interesting sister as well. You could imagine her being in a, like a Vermeer painting. And I don't think any of them have quite captured that mm. timelessness. Oh. Another extraordinary sitter, John Cooper Clark. Wow. <laughs> uh, Tim has two portraits on the go. Double bubble or double trouble? <laughs> he sort of started with this fog, and John sort of appeared, and he just got better and better and better. But he really has caught something of John's essence in this smoky way. I, I'm, I'm really impressed. I think it's interesting that Graham's portrait of John is actually technically too squished. You know, like when you write a birthday card and you're a kid and you go, happy birthday, you <laughs> run out of room. That's what that painting is like, but it somehow works because yes. actually John in the chair is sort of very larger than life, but also quite small. He's like a crow pope. <laughs> yes, the one. He's a poet, he'll appreciate that. Well, it's fabulous just sitting around watching uh, people, watching other people. <laughs> I want to see myself looking like Rock Hudson's better-looking kid brother. That's the plan, anyway. Now, I feel, along with the orange, that I've come as the 1970s today, which, you know, it's no bad thing. I love to people watch, obviously, I'm having to be still. You know, it's like my other senses are sort of ear-wigging on. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm watching everyone like a hawk. Iman's very precise. Nick's like a mad professor mixing his paint. And Susie's like attacking the canvas. So to sort of sit and watch them is fascinating, but it's also excruciating that I can't actually see what they're doing. It's killing me. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. But if your view through the window is obscured, you have to search for character elsewhere. With portrait, often you'd want to paint the eyes because obviously it gives a real sense of life, having the glint in the eye. But with John, there's so much character anyway that it's not going to be as big an issue as it might be. The eyes are kind of the key, in a sense, yeah. to the personality. Yes. I might go up to my iPad for that, because I can't see much eyes from it, but I am an optician. 
Well, I used to be. <laughs> OK. So they are very important. I used to know a bit so about you, it. So you look at an eye in a different way from most of us. Yes, and if they're not correct, someone who knows about eyes will spot it right away. OK. <laughs> We're into the last hour, but that's plenty of time for the canvases to undergo a total transformation. Susie, we were worried where the colour was going to come in. <laughs> I know, I know. When it starts going on, it's really exciting. So is there anywhere that you think you're going to build up a lot more colour-wise? Um, possibly the hair and, and down here. But, you don't um, know, do you? It's just no. coming from some place intuitively yeah, and it's yeah. just finding its way out there. Just going for it. Here, you've really heightened the colours. Not long ago, Hayden had purple hair. Yeah, I might make it more purple. I like that. There's a lot of yellow in there, too. <laughs> it's really bold. There are only 30 minutes remaining. Have you finished? I'm not going to do a lot, because at this stage, I could obliterate work that I'm pleased with. Please don't obliterate the work you're pleased I with. I won't. I think I'd just like to have a bit more time to work on the hair a little bit and uh, round it to make it more of a finished piece, but I've just got to pick those things that will make the biggest difference. I think I need to sort out the eyes, finish up the hair and the mouth and the neck. <laughs> Everything, basically. Our nine artists are nearing the end of their challenge, painting Hayden Gwynn, John Cooper Clark, and Fern Cotton. I get the impression you could stand there and look at it all day, but that's why we give you the time limit. Yeah, we should have a bit longer, really. <laughs> well, I guess everyone does. <laughs> everyone does. I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one looks like John, so I think I've got something that I like the look of. Artists, you have five minutes to go. Oh, come on. It's not going to get any better. Don't think I can make it too much worse, so we're probably almost there. <laughs> I'm still working, as you can see, but not frantic. <laughs> Artists, your time is up. Please put down your equipment and stand away from your easels. After four hours of intense creativity from our artists, the sitters can at last see the finished portraits and pick their favourite to take home. How was it? Terrific. Well, there's four portraits of you to look at. You could have fooled me. I think we should look at it, don't you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Artists, turn your easels. Whoa. I'll say it in one sentence. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Misty John. Yeah, fabulous. I Less like Misty this. John. I like this. Enigmatic, isn't it? Enigmatic as all oh, hell, yes. <laughs> it's from the mists of time. <laughs> Fabulous, that. I had a look at this halfway through, and there was nothing there. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's miraculous. It's, uh, this painting happened in two ways, gradually and suddenly. <laughs> like, sensational, that, really. Oh, yes. thank you. 
that smash in them. And you've really got the gelt there. Yes, oh, bouncing off the background. Yeah, there. that's uh, wow. How do you do that? Also, it's it's kind of nervous, <laughs> which I like. Right, it's decision time. It's very difficile. Uh, they've all got their own vibe. I wish I was that handsome. <laughs> Dynamite, that gold. But I've got to go for the moodiness of it. I'm going to go with Tim's piece here. <laughs> Fern, you are a free woman. Oh, I can move my joints. Oh. <laughs> OK. Artists, will you please turn round your easels? Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, wow. They're all so unbelievably different. Come and meet them. Guys, oh, my God. Your style is just so exquisite. Especially the eyes. It's quite weird, it's sort of like I'm looking into my own eyes. They are my eyes. It's spectacular. So intricate. There's so much detail going on there. And so delicate and soft. It's really beautiful and hazy. I love it. It's so lovely to now see what you've done with all of those colours. I love all of this brilliant <laughs> chaos up here. It's brilliant. And the moment's arrived. Oh. This is excruciatingly difficult when they're all just so unique and brilliant, but I'm going to go with Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, shall we do it? Uh, OK, OK. <laughs> Artists, can okay. you please Probably turn like a look. your easels? There you go. OK, can I look? Yes. <gasps> Do you have a look? Yeah, let's have a closer look. I'm loving the sort of way you've applied the colour. Yeah. God, God, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you talking about the purple hair, but it, it sort of totally too... works, doesn't it? Particularly against the white. She's quite ferocious, isn't she? Yeah, Which she's my, strong, look. you know, my my children would say perhaps they recognise that. <laughs> <laughs> right, Fantastic. Hayden. Don't make me do this. You pick one. <sighs> I'm going to go with this one. Well done. Now the artist's work is over, the judges are left alone with the portraits to take a closer look. Susie's made a rather good portrait of Fern. She's really caught her very well. I felt that she struggled with the likeness, actually. Fern started to emerge with some of the pencil marks, and then it's gone away again. I think Iman's really got her colouring correctly. That gorgeous peach tone on the nose that plays out in the cheeks. I love her brush strokes, but it feels to me like they haven't really done Fern any favours in that bottom half of the jaw. Nick did something really interesting, which was take his style and deliver something different. The colours sing beautifully, and you get a sense of Fern, absolutely. I love this sketchy paint that skirts on the surface. John's not too worried about resolving it. There's a problem with the likeness, but I'm interested in the way that he paints. I really like the chalky texture that Rebecca brings in her work. This colourful sense of joyfulness that she mm. found in Hayden, and I think she's caught some of that. Keith's likeness was much better early on. But having said that, that reflection of her orange jumper under the chin, mm. it is really beautiful. There's something really special about Graham's portrait. It is a bit cramped, but I think it adds to its charm, and I think he knew quite early on that he probably could get away with it. I find a real delicacy in Pippa's work, and somehow she managed to capture a really strong sense of John's coolness. I've got a problem with the likeness. It is like him, but it wasn't him as I experienced him. I was a bit worried about Tim giving us a diptych, and I feel very won over. And this softness and these weird areas of focus, I think it's, he's a very interesting artist. 
First, the judges have to get the nine down to three. Let's swap these two over. They've all got a likeness and they've all got a spirit. I think that's a good little group, actually. It's interesting how many questions it's thrown up. It's just fascinating. So who have the judges shortlisted? The first artist is... Tim Gatenby. The second artist is Nick Fear. The third artist to be shortlisted, Graham Dudridge. It would have been great to have gone through, but it's not often you get to do something like this, experience a whole mad process, so I really have loved every minute. So the first thing to notice is there are two paintings of one sitter. What I like about the diptych from Tim is that you sort of have that sense of the ghostly character from Dickens or something. He somehow managed to work with spirit rather than just the physicality. Whereas when you look at the painting by Graham, there is something slightly going towards a sort of more caricature, or mm. he's, he's sort of reduced the elements to do John Cooper Clark to the power of 10. Mm, I agree. I think the way Graham's caught him in very few brush marks, I think is masterful. I'm really encouraged actually once we get to here and then we see them next to their submissions and I think actually their submissions are really strong mm -hmm. and what they do today complements it. And I think that's what Nick did today because he has got quite a refined style and actually today he had to respond to a totally different set of circumstances and I think the looseness there is absolutely glorious. To do it today on a competition day and really stay loose is co courageous. I think seeing Nick's portrait today makes me appreciate his submission much more. Mm. Well, I don't know how you're going to choose between them all, but I'm sure you will make a great choice. Really hard today. Graham, Tim, Nick. Of course, it's already an incredible achievement to have reached the shortlist, but sadly, as you well know, only one of you could go through to the semi-final. The artist that the judges have selected was successful in capturing the spirit of the sitter as well as their likeness. That artist is... Tim Gatenby. Congratulations. Well done. It's amazing. I mean, I didn't expect it whatsoever. So it feels great, yeah to think that I took that risk to do the diptych and judges seemed to like it. I think Tim was a very worthy winner. I think he added another dimension of mystery to the piece, so in a sense, he sort of exceeded the brief. What an experience. I certainly won't forget it. Pressure, excitement, just amazing day. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Tim's amazing discovery the way he paints is something I've never seen before, the way he creates atmosphere. And I'm really excited to see where he goes as an artist. I think I'm quite shocked at the moment. I really can't believe that I won today, honestly. It's amazing. <laughs>